They are saying, the time for killing has come. Don't worry, if you die, we'll take you back to your village. African Warriors is um, the first organization in the world um, sort of formalizing and showcasing indigenous African combat sports. So what we're doing here is looking to build Africa's UFC featuring ancient traditional combat sports. We're, we take the role of giving these guys a wider platform, but you can never say we created these sports. These sports existed for like hundreds of thousands of years before us and they're huge. These these fighters are superstars um, in their villages, in their towns. Currently, we feature two forms of combat native to Nigeria. The first form, we feature is Dambe. So summarize that to traditional Nigerian boxing. And really, Dambe's um, sort of roots are from warfare. So it's how these groups um, sort of prepared for war. It's a very different form of boxing to what we know in the Western world. One hand, their power hands, wrapped in rope and so this power hand is used to like land punches and the other hand is used to gauge distance and then we have wrestling so wrestling oldest sort of form of combat oldest sport in the world nigerian wrestling practiced all around the country different groups and different um, tribes around nigeria have different takes on it we had a new camera guy on, on, on the team and he spoke the language and it was his first time seeing seeing dambe sort of practiced and he sort of tapped me with this worried look on his face. And he was like, do you know what the musicians are saying? They are saying, the time for killing has come. Don't worry, if you die, we'll take you back to your village. That's just, just, that just speaks about like the roots of this. You know, this isn't, you know, you go down the gym on the weekends and sort of, you know, punch the bag a bit and then go home. This is what these guys live. And this is, it's, this is organized warfare. Of course, the biggest champions in any sport, the biggest champions earn the biggest prizes. But many of these guys are still sort of on the breadline, are still not earning much. So really, this is a route for guys to get worldwide recognition. This is a route for them to sort of become heroes. And like the, these sports, they're so raw, um, ultimately. You know, you think about, you know, if you think about sport here, you think about the sort of bright lights and stuff of the UFC or sort of a boxing match or a football match. But this is as simple as two guys in the sandpit with who are sort of putting it all on the line because of this could be their route to making money. This could be their route to sort of putting food on the table. These guys are competing for houses who have pretty much adopted them and raised them in these sports. And they're all representing. So they're representing their villages, they're representing their tribal groups, and they're sort of coming to take home glory to their village, take home glory to the chief of their village and say, I represented you well, I represented us, you know? So ultimately, the, these sports, they're, they're, they're African in, in everything that, you know, that's their heritage. And we can never take that apart, we can never take that away from them. And we're sort of proud to be able to be the flag bearers of that. But at the 